Okay, now we're going to talk about the topic of, of uh, the equations of motion along one dimension. And you'll see as we go on in physics that these are, can be generalized into two and three dimensions, okay? So what we're going to talk about is motion with constant acceleration. Okay, so that means uh, motion when the acceleration is constant. Uh, a couple examples would be free fall. You know, the gravitational field here produces what we call the acceleration of gravity, and that acceleration is constant because you, you probably haven't noticed the uh, Earth changing its gravitational pull on you lately. So that's a constant acceleration. If I drop this, uh, this guy down, you know, it'll continue to fall at the same rate each and every time that I start this experiment, okay? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write some equations on the board on the right-hand side that are going to be... Um, uh, equations that you're going to learn in any, any standard physics book, and then we're going to work a couple problems here, okay? Um, here's what I call the, uh, like to call the uh, predictor equations, okay? The first equation is x is equal to v naught t, and I'll explain all this in a second, plus one-half a t squared. You'll see this in every physics book, Okay, it's some of the most fundamental equations of motion. It looks kind of daunting. Let's go ahead and break it down, and I'll explain it to you here. First of all, you have t here and t here, not to be confused with the plus sign. This is time, and this is time. So the independent variable in this equation is time. Okay, what this equation is predicting is how far have I moved in my one-dimensional motion down this line, okay, as a function of time. I put a time in, I get a new location. So here may be t1, here may be at t5, like five seconds later. It's predicting where have I gone along, along my um, one-dimensional path that I can travel on here in my 1D motion, okay? Also, there's an A and there's a V naught. You'll see this V naught business around in basically all of the books. V naught means initial velocity. So basically, you can, you can remember it. V naught is equal to the initial velocity. Just think of naught... Um, meaning like zero, meaning the initial initial velocity. So I've got the initial velocity times my t the time that I've traveled in this path, and here's the acceleration, and also here's the time. So I want to explain to you a little bit what, what's going on here. Let's look at this part of the equation, okay? Um, I've got meters per second, which is this velocity, times time, which is seconds, okay? This is going to spit out um, a position in meters, and that's good because that's what I'm trying to actually find by my equation. I'm just kind of showing you that it works, okay? Here, one half is a constant, so it really doesn't matter. So look at the rest of this. The acceleration is meters per second squared. That's the units of acceleration. The t is squared, so I have time squared, and they cancel, and so what I'm left with again is meters, which is a unit of distance. So what I'm basically saying here is, if you know how fast you started out, how many, you know, how, what was your initial speed, okay, this part of the equation is predicting how far I've moved due to the initial speed that I had. So I may throw this pencil across the room at some initial velocity, okay, but, and I may be speeding it up or I may be slowing it down, but I started with some initial velocity. This part of the equation is predicting how far do I move just because of the initial velocity. And this part, part of the equation is predicting how far do I move because of the speeding up or the slowing down, i.e. the acceleration. And when you take these two things and you add it together, what you get is the final result, 